Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Camp Acker Podcast. My name is Travis Allison. I run a blog about running a great summer camp at Camp Acker TV, and I'm one of the founding founders of GoCamp.pro. Hi, my name is Topher. I am the assistant director at Camp Gray down in Wisconsin. And I'm uh, Mark Cooper. I'm a full-time camp director at Camp Tamarack in uh, about two hours outside of Toronto in, in Muskoka, Ontario. Mark, welcome back to the show. It's great to have you. Thanks, Travis. Always good to be here, too. Yes. And Mark, actually, both of these guys should be a lesson to other listeners, too. Both have reached out at different times and said they'd love to be back on. So we do try to bring in a different voice every time. So let's consider that an open invitation to you. email me at Travis at CampHacker.tv and say, hey, I'd like to talk about camp sometime. Um, Mark, tell us a bit about Tamarack. Um. Um, Tamara, so we're a co-ed residential camp up in uh, Muskoka. Uh, right now, like I'm in Toronto. We have a Toronto office at an hour and 45 minutes. Um, so the traditional during the summer, and, and we get tons of, you know, over the past couple of years, uh, really attracting a, a big international community. Um, last year, we had 60 kids from Mexico, kids from Spain, France. Uh, we actually had our first uh, about dozen kids from China. Um, we have about 120 staff, about 330 kids, um, on a private lake. It's a beautiful place, and uh, you know. And then that's during the summer. And then big push now is is the shoulder season, also that May and June and and September, with the you know running the outdoor ed program, the school groups, and the corporate staff too, which is which is kind of a whole other. You know, I, I think we're finding out it's a whole other venture. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, so. It's, uh, it keep, definitely keeps us busy. Right on. Well, it's great to have you back, Mark. And I can also attest that Tamarack is a beautiful site. Now, I haven't been to Camp Gray, but I've seen lots of great stuff about Camp Gray. If you have mm -hmm. been to my presentations, you will have seen one or two of the videos that Topher has produced for Camp Gray um, because I love them so much and use them as great examples often. Um, so, Topher, it's a pleasure to have you back. Hey, thanks. It's my pleasure. Um, so uh, you actually have a great year-round program and a lot of year-round stuff going on at Camp Gray. Yeah, and that's something that really um, it surprises us that there's even folks that come during the summer that don't realize that we're open year-round. But we get almost three times as many kids, more than 3,000 kids uh, between September and May that come out here. Just about every day there's something going on. Um, I would say summer camp is still our bread and butter, though. We get about yeah, 1,300 kids out to our traditional summer camp. We're a Catholic camp, so we tie that in. But, um, yeah, just a lot of fun going on out here year-round. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, it's yeah. great to have you back, too, Topher. Thank you. Um, there are some of the other regulars send their apologies that they're not able to be here. It's just the three of us this time. For those of you not watching us on YouTube, there's uh, there's just three faces instead of the others. Um, today we're going to, actually before we do that, let me say this, that uh, that we hope that what we offer here at Camp Hacker with this show and with Camp Code um, provides some great value to you as a camp director. Uh, certainly our goal is to always be answering questions that you're asking yourself and looking for roots to that. So um, the way that we can best get out to get this free service of Camp Hacker out to others is if you help us spread the word. So if you go to camphacker.tv slash iTunes, there's a space there that you can leave a review. We're not looking for, we're not begging for five stars. We're looking for an honest review from, from other people. That helps us decide what to focus on more, what the next directions are for the show. Um, but it's also really helpful for helping people find a podcast about directing summer camp. So again, that's at uh, camphacker.tv slash iTunes. And today for our topic, uh, this one we're excited about, it's the second in our third part series um, called Is Camp Right For Me? And it is really focused on people who are um, considering summer camp or in their first three, four years of, of being a year-round camp person. And our last show focused on you know, helping you make that decision, whether um, just because you loved summer camp as a child or as a you know, college-aged camp staff person, if it's the if it's still appropriate for you to be in the business as an adult, and I think there's some awesome discussion. We've had some really great feedback about that. Um, <clears throat> hat tip to Ruby who was listening to it and tweeting it yesterday. It's like I could see there's all this like six tweets from Ruby as she was listening to the show yesterday from parts of the the conversation. And 
oh shoot, I wanted to call it somebody else who who said that they have a Joe Richards quote board in their office. Um, <laughs> they just write down funny things that Joe says on the podcast. Um, and uh, crap. I, I, anyway. I'll, I'll maybe get a chance to look that up and, and thank that person in, in person for um, for making me laugh out loud at the idea of a Joe Richards board in your office. Um, we need like a, a t-shirt. Yeah. Right? <laughs> it would be hilarious. It would be hilarious. Um, so today, today we're going to continue on the theme, but we're going to talk about um, how as a, a new professional, it doesn't have to be a young professional, but somebody who's new into doing this year round, how you can prepare yourself for the long slog of this. Uh, we talked a lot in the last show about how hard this job really is, that, um, you know, the, the benefits are obvious. You get to be outside, you get to be with people who have similar interests and people that inspire you, but uh, there are hard parts to this. And so um, preparing yourself for that is, uh, is really important. Um, I'm becoming more and more a fan of the Stoic philosophers uh, and their idea that the best way to be happy is to prepare yourself for the worst and just imagine negative situations and then how you'd overcome them. And then once you've figured out how to work through that mentally, then you're much more prepared if bad things ever happen, but usually things surprise you with how good they happen. So um, hopefully this is the, the Stoic philosophy version of the Camp Hacker podcast. Um, and Tofar, I'd like to throw to you first, what are some of the things you think that people don't think of, what are some of the hard things that people don't think of when they accept a job full-time at a summer camp? Um, I think, well, for me specifically, and I, I've heard this from others as well, is, is um, the variety of tasks that are thrown your way. Yep. Um, and, and I think the, um, the need to... Um, you know, be malleable. When I first took the job eight years ago, I had a set list of tasks that I do very few of those anymore. A lot of that is because I do the marketing and it's amazing how much marketing has changed in the last eight years with social media and podcasts and all these things that weren't here eight years ago. Um, so I think that's maybe a big thing that I struggled with and I've heard from others that, um, yes, you've got to be on your toes because there's a lot of variety, but then also be prepared to say goodbye to certain things if it's not working and, and, and go other directions. Yeah, that's awesome. That's really great. How about for you, Mark? What are some of the things you think people don't think of when they sign up for this? Um, I think, you know, a, a big thing is, is finding the, the, um, the balance between, you know, family life and, and um, you know, family life and, and camp life. You know, I think we all we all have this little utopic world of, of you know of summer camp. But then when it's not at summer camp, in the it, really in the off season, where it's finding that balance, and or if you're in some type of relationship, then you you have to kind of pick up and leave. And when you're at camp, and those you know your your significant others, or you know even keeping in contact and connection with the outside world during the summertime, you know is is almost non-existent. And and when you're in a full-time role, also you're not always surrounded by all your the support network. It I think becomes somewhat smaller. You're not they're not all your friends now. They become sometimes employees and still friends, but you're in a you, you see it from a very different angle. So I think it's a it's a big learning curve. I, I remember when I got into it, and, and even I see now as we've brought up some other people, that's you know, it it gets a little sometimes lonelier at the top, and then you know trying to manage setting up that time for your 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 other life, not just camp, because camp is, is during, specifically during that summertime, it's very, you know, intense, right? Yeah. That's a big thing. Yeah, I think that, that that's certainly one thing that, um, that a lot of people don't think about is that that intensity, I mean, some, most people who would be going into this full time will have likely had four month summers where it's go, go, go for four months. And then at the end of it, you just sort of collapse and, and sleep. Mm -hmm. Um, and, um, and people famously, you know, unknowing relatives and weird friends will say to you, what do you do the rest of the year? And, um, and as a camp director, that, that's that stretch period where you're pushing so hard has gotten so much longer man it's gotten really long 
Um, and, you know, for most camp directors would find those you know, 18 hour days, six days a week um, would last six months of the year. You know, it would last till the end of September. If you have, you know, if you have fall programming, it might last you till November. Um, and that you have to be able to bet, you know, be better at pacing yourself for that. Um, and there's no doubt that that means that sometimes you have to miss out on the fun stuff that happens late at night and get sleep. Um, but, but it is a, that exhausting four months last six to seven months now that you're in it full time. And um, you really have to get better at, uh, at looking after yourself, going to bed. Um, and as Mark says, finding time for um, finding time for friends, finding th time for the things that rejuvenate you. Um, I am not a morning person, but I have had to learn as a camp director to be a morning person because it was the only time that I could be alone. And, you know, I'd have an hour and a half before 730 in the morning, usually an hour. Um, that I could go walk the dogs in the trails in the bush. Or, you know, if I was in the city, then I would be, you know, just walking here, quiet, listening to stuff, whatever I can, whatever it takes to rejuvenate, to have some time on my own. Um, and, you know, then add into that, um, having a partner being married, then I had to learn how to incorporate that. And we worked hard to incorporate that into mm -hmm. our own lives too. So, mm -hmm. yeah. A any other things that come up for you guys about surprises for people in this? in the job for what? for for me I, I think it's also it's it's the I, you know as you know I've, I've been doing this 15 years full time and i think it's every year i i, I catch myself saying wow I, just when i thought i've seen it all <laughs> uh, it, it's you know i never thought that would happen or or a staff would do that or or a situation or you know, we had a gas or outbreak and, you know, well, that happened and that happened. So it's 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 always evolving. And like Topher said, like even like the advertising over the past couple of years, it was even, even like it's 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 always it's very organic camp. And I think that's what happens is I think in order to, to get into the camping game now, you have to be, you know, you have to be fluid you have you can't there's you know there's camp guys who are just setting their ways and that's it and they, you can't play that game anymore i think like it's every year just these things you know it is like you said is is i guess plan for the worst and expect the best and you know and you can do as much planning but nothing you know can prepare you for some of the stuff that you're going to see like be as proactive as you can but like it just it throws you for a loops so whether it's you know a uh, uh, a staff situation or a camper situation or you know whatever it is it's 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 unbelievable just when i think of the things that you see as a camp director um or full-time and I, I think a big thing is also like it's um it becomes a job so you know you still love camp but that that feeling of camp of oh let's all take a day off with four of our university and college buddies and stuff like you kind of become sometimes a little nostalgic for for that time we're like oh i wow i wish i could be that but i i got 15 parent phone calls three kids who you know busting their kid two international kids are arriving you know the the kitchen the the fridge broke down i you know four in the morning now you're out there with the you know whatever it is you know there's so many pieces to the puzzle of of summer camp right yeah so you're gonna say something too yeah, I would just say that, um, yeah, because you're exactly right, Mark. There's so many things that, that can and do go wrong. And uh, I remember we it, it could be daunting. I remember thinking about these things in the past and worrying about, well, if this happens. and uh, um, But I find that some of the best stories that we have amongst the full-time yes. staff that have been yep. here for a lot of are – are mem reminiscing about, oh, do you remember week one back in 2000 when the freezer broke and, yeah. you know, this happened? And um, – so is to try to, um, yeah, I guess approach systems where stuff's going to happen. And so to not let that affect the product that you have and um, to really, really just kind of laugh at, well, golly, like this broke too. Okay, well, it's, it's camp, like this happens. So right. um, that's something that, I guess that we try to roll with. Yeah. yeah. I would, you know, it's one of my biggest pieces of advice for people who are interested in this. And, and this is, 
you know, whether or not you are a program person and you're used to being with kids all the, all the time and that's you know your introduction to your own camp work or if you're more on the management admin side where you're doing planning and and you know thinking big picture either way you have to you have to be comfortable being a problem solver um and you know you have to be able you have to realize that um that life is different in in the other months of the year but it's still up to you to solve the problems so in the summer you might have a team of people who could solve problems together but sometimes you're stuck at camp you've got a group coming in two hours and you're there by yourself and you're gonna have to solve some plumbing like it's just there's ways you got to figure out how to do it and um and going into uh, and I don't know how you prepare yourself for that, other than psychologically, I'm going to have to, you know, look at problems, break them down into their small pieces, and figure out how to solve that. Because there are some people in the world who don't consider themselves problem solvers, and um, you know, just see things and say, "Well, I don't know how to do that." And there are lots of times in this job you just can't be the person who says that. You have to be the person who says, "We have to figure out how to do this," and um, you know, facing those kind of things with some positivity is the difference between, um, well, it's really it's one of the things that makes it sustainable. You're going to laugh about it later. It's going to be the story that you tell, um, but you have to you have to come into it with some grace and some positivity and just like take a deep breath and say, okay, let's start solving. And mm -hmm. I think that all that yeah. was big implications. We had, we had something Travis called like, solution-based thinking yeah. so whenever there was an issue um, and we were discussing it was you could only come in you could only talk if you had a solution because what happens often at camp is people just feed into it and, and just infect it oh yeah that's wrong that's wrong and all of a sudden it's like we haven't done anything and it's and if you're not here to help out then then we just got to say that just just step aside and we'll we'll, we'll get to you but solution-based thinking what yeah. what's our problem who's got an idea to fix it and and Camp people are, are like that, right? Camp people are are, are amazing in that. Right? Like, okay, let's just, all right, what's the problem? All right, everyone grab a shovel, let's go. And you just, the, the kind of like, you know, the, I often say like, and you often say on the podcast, the GTD, to just get things done. Like just, that's what camp people, and like, all right, there's 150 chairs. You can always tell when you're at a function or something who are camp people. Like all of a sudden, like the chairs are gone and everyone just grabs a chair, everyone grabs a table. Like you love going to a conference and you see, all right, just stuff gets done because, Ever pitches in, and when you just know the value of that, right? But being salute, coming up with a, a solution, um, you know, or, or you're not welcome to be part of the conversation because it's, it's it's so, you know, it becomes just the the problem just grows and grows and grows. Right? Yeah, yeah. I always have a lot of respect for people who develop what we call director's eyes, and we we try to talk to senior staff who you know we would consider. Um, you know, grooming for a year-round position in, in camps and say you have to develop the skill of director's eyes and and that's yeah. exactly what you described mark you you have 200 200 people coming into a room with 150 chairs out the people who have director's eyes go boom 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 we don't have enough chairs let's start work to solve that right. and you, you don't have to say it there's just, just people just jump up and start solving and um that ability is something you can learn certainly look around the room and see where the problems are in all situations um but then you have to be comfortable being the one who leads that and yes. and 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 starts those things instead of waiting for somebody to do it that's all of that means how that relates to, i mean that makes you a good camp director that makes you a good year-round camp person is a person who sees problems and starts to solve them but how how that makes this job sustainable and how i think it relates to this conversation in particular is that one of the the greatest keys to happiness in the world is serving others and so you are going to get some great endorphin value psychological value out of being the person who can solve things for others and that makes this job um so much easier to do because because there are a lot of days that it's overwhelming um there are a lot of days we just think i just all i need to do is get one foot in front of the other to make it through this day and um the rewards are are obviously there it's totally worth working through those days um but you have to be the person who's willing i think what makes it sustainable is that moment of th thinking for others and doing things for them uh and solving their problems that make it you know it make it make it easier for you to do this job long term yeah i was 
when I was uh, when I first started here at Camp Cray, I was a counselor. I was in college, counselor for a couple years, and then I got hired into this full time position. And that first summer, I really missed being a counselor. Really missed being around the kids. It wasn't until Travis I had that mindset of, well, wait a minute, I'm serving our counselors now to ensure that their experience is great, and that then by extension their campers experience is great. Um, it wasn't until I had that mind switch. So like, well, no, I'm not with the kids as much, but I'm able to impact more kids because I'm impacting the staff and serving them and helping them to create great, great pro programming. So, um, there is a definite, yes, it helps, helped my mindset a lot once I made that switch. Do you, what sort of things for you, Mark, made you mentally say, okay, I'm a camp director. Um, wow. Like, I, wow, that's a good question. Like, uh, besides like, obviously, <clears throat> you know, obviously you, you signed a contract and said, okay, I'm a camp director. But like, I think it took a, 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 you know, I've grown over the past few years, you know, it's been a long time, it's 15 years, but I think what, what happened is like, you develop a, a style. Um, I, I think a big thing for me, all like the big, a big, huge turning point. Um, and I think you're a great camp director, whether you have kids or not. Um, but when I had a kid, and, and it, you know, for me, that was a, such a turning point where I was like, I saw, like, wow, parent, the trust that parents put in us, because here I was sending my kid away. A day camp too. I kind of got that, um, you know. I, I kind of had that same feeling. Wow, like that's a massive amount of trust that, you know, here you are and, and you're hiring these staff, and these people never meet these staff. These people are trusting you. It's not like I'm lending you my car and stuff. And but here's my kid, right? And um, so I think that was a, a huge. Um, a huge part of, of kind of when I knew it became a, or, or when camp director became real. And also there's a, you know, a turning point where it's, um, you know, I, I think at, at camp when, um, over the past, past couple of years, we've hired a lot of new staff. And I think it's interesting. I also grew up at, at, at Tamarack and then I left for a bunch of years, but when I came back, still people thought of me as like, Oh, you know, Mark Cooper's unit had any so much fun. And all of a sudden I was in a different role. I was like, no, I'm, I'm still really fun. But they were all thinking, oh, let's, you know, do something. Still. And I was like, no, I'm on this side of the, the fence. And they actually came up with this really terrible nickname. They called me the Nixor because oh. I would I would nix everything. And I wasn't I was like, it's not nixing stuff. I'm just trying to make it a better place. Um, so it took a couple of years, I think, over the past few years when I have new staff and they they're here for the right reason. And uh, they're you can see it in their eyes that they're looking to you for direction and they're saying, Hey, can we go for a walk and can you teach me? And you're like, wow, like they're kind of taking me, not that <laughs> like, you know, also I was like, wow, they're taking, they're listening to what I'm, I'm saying more than like the kids who have grown up at the camp, you know, these staff who kind of are parachuting in a little bit and also the campers and also the parent community now too. Whereas in the off season, you know, our phone will ring you know, weekly of parents saying, hey, can you give me some advice? You're so good with the 12, 13-year-old girls at camp. Uh, you know, my daughter's being, this is happening at camp. Can you speak to her? I'm like, yeah, of course. And, what, you know, the extension of, of a camp director, I've realized now, isn't just during the summer. It's like parents, you're the kid expert. You're the, you know, on, on so many levels. And even whether it's someone's planning a party, can you help me plan? You be plan great parties and stuff at camp? Sure. Or, you know, our, my daughter's going through a really tough time. Do you have anyone to speak to? Can she come in? She feels so comfortable talking to you. And I'm going, I'm the camp director. Like, I, I'm the guy who wears the funny hats and is on the mic calling you up. But sure. Like, so that's when I've kind of realized. And it's taken a while. Those first few years were really tough. But then you become almost that, that I think it takes 10 years to become an expert. Right? That's what they say. To really, really get your know. And I, over the past couple of years, I've really felt like, Okay, I, I actually do have, because I've con constant learn, I have this pretty big wealth of knowledge, and it's kind of clicked a little bit, like, you know, and, yeah. and again, going back, I think is, it's constant, all, all it is, is serving others, helping, I, you know, call me 24-7, I'm here for you, right, and, you know, all of those kind of things, you know, 
Um, and you, you get a good you get a good feeling when you help others. It's, it's good to help, right? It's good to be there without looking for something in in you know to reciprocate. I'm not going, hey, I'll help you because right. your 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 husband owns a car dealership. Can you get me a you know? That's what we're here for. Like, yeah. and and I think parents are always taken back. We're like, wow, thanks. It's it's nice to have you in our in our corner, right? Yep. That's kind of that's when I it's kind of realized like when people are reaching out in other areas, not just sometimes not even just during the summer. Yeah. 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 Thanks for that. That's yeah. great. Um, for you, Topher, was there a moment where you sort of you know switched your head from summer staff to full time staff mode? I think, um, like I was saying earlier, that was a big part of it. Was just finally uh, kind of wrapping my mind around that. Yeah, my job now is to serve our staff, and uh, and also, also I'd say a big thing for me was when I took over my position, the guy that had the position previously, he left this binder, that forty-five page binder of everything that he did in this position and day by day task. It was incredible. Yeah. And I kind of though, it, it was kind of a uh, double-edged sword, I guess. You know, it was great. Uh, and I was so grateful, but at the same time, I think for a couple of years, I just kind of stayed attached to that. Like, well, this is what Joe did. I guess I'll just keep doing that. It wasn't until a couple of years into having this job that I finally said, you know what? It's time to branch away from that, start doing things that I would do. And so then I think when I took ownership of it, um, those two things, ownership of it, and then also yeah, kind of accepting and really appreciating the fact that I was getting to serve our staff. Once I did those two things, um, I think it was finally yeah. like, yes, I am a professional now, and um, and really have never looked back. It's been a great journey ever since then. Yeah, right on. Right on. Well, um, I have a couple notes that I just wanted to talk about, but I would um, ask the two of you just think if there's any final thoughts that you would have while I'm I am talking through some of these things. And of course, welcome to chime in at any time. But if there, I'm going to start to wrap us up in the topic and head into the tool of the week soon. Um, it, so two things that came up. Um, from the stuff that you both said, one is that um, I know when I first started this job, and, and I was hired, I was hired to fix a camp, and I was 23 years old, and I was the sole year-round staff person, um, and the board clearly said you're you've been brought in to to fix this camp, and so I had a ton of challenges, not the least of which was my damn board, um, and. And so I remember my first summer, um, you know, getting partway through the summer and having someone leave a, a note on my, um, my, my desk or, you know, just in a little message place for me. Um, most of you know that my camp name was Zoic. So the note said, hey, Zoic, don't be so stoic. And I realized that I, it, I really hadn't smiled. Like I, I hadn't enjoyed things. And mm-hmm. um and I, I would say in terms of sustainability and getting yourself ready to do this for the long term, five years, 10 years, 25 years, that you have to find the fun in it. Like you've got it, whatever your fun is, like it's it's fun for me. I love that moment when I'm in the woods walking the trails um, it, by myself. Um, you know, it's great to have dogs with you. And, and, and I love that feeling of knowing the property better than anyone else. And so that's fun for me, but I can't, I can't give up on the fact that my other side is that I love singing, um, you know, leading songs at campfire and, uh, you know, I love teaching people to play guitar and I, my, I, I've always said that my, my favorite days at camps are the days that you laugh until you cry. And then if I get just one of those a summer, it's been a good summer. Most summer I'd have more than one of those days, but you know, I, I was sort of waiting for that day when I, we laugh until we cry. And, um, that I realized in my first summer that I, that I hadn't allowed myself to do that. Part of it was that, um, that I wasn't letting people get to know me, that I was so caught up in all of the challenges that I hadn't put myself out there in any way. And so I had to learn to relax, trust in the people around me and, um, and have some fun with it. So it, it made a huge difference to, um, you know, the 14 years that I was a camp director. I think that that was one of the, the, the key parts to that sustainability was having fun with the stuff that we did. 
Uh, my other piece of my final piece of advice for someone just starting out is that I think you need mentors. It's so important to have a mentor that you can call on. Um, you develop those relationships by doing things, meeting people online and getting to know them or meeting them at conferences and, you know, just having chats. I always think my favorite part of any conference is um, are the evenings when the activities are done and people are just sitting around chatting and, you know, discussing problems for the summer or you won't believe what happened. And, uh, you know, those kind of things I think are what really make it. And that's how you develop long term friends who get you um, and you know who that you can unwind to and one of my biggest challenges to you the listeners is um, I, I wouldn't do this job anymore um, as a camp director if I couldn't have a mastermind group and that is just a peop- group of people who are at my same level in in camp and you go to camppacker.tv search for mastermind we'll show you right there how to set set up a mastermind group but a mastermind just is a group of people that meet regularly um found with camp directors it's best people like to do it every two weeks um just for an hour and a half or an hour on skype and just tell people everything and the, the, the amount of trust that develops between those group of people is enormous the the stuff that people share um is amazing and um, i mean i i facilitate and, and people pay for facilitated masterminds but all the materials out there you could run it yourself but just having three friends four friends who you know know your struggles day to day throughout the winter that you could call on if something happens just to keep yourself sane is something that will help you do this job long term it is an incredibly stressful job and it's gotten a lot more so since i started directing you know that summer i was 23 was um well i was 94 so in that time the job has gotten so much more stressful but um having the people around you who know you and you can talk to is incredibly important and like mark said that often at a certain point won't be the people that you work with is a certain point they're going to have to be an employee employer relationship where you still have fun with them but you're they're not going to be the ones you open up to so i'd encourage everyone getting started find a group of people who are also getting started and just have regular conversations with them the accountability alone um i think is worth it plus having these group of people to um to call on it when you need them and uh the, anyway it's great relationships i i think it's really awesome mm-hmm. um and Topher, for you is there any final thoughts that that you have about um helping people get ready to do this for a long term well i would say i would just kind of echo a little bit of what you were saying um as far as the um what did you call the meeting up groups that you have every couple of weeks? Masterminds. The mastermind group. So I don't, that's a good idea. I don't do that specifically. Um, I would like to, but um, what I have, what we have going on here at Camp Gray is there's a number of people that um, I can go to and I love to brainstorm. That's one of my favorite things to do. And I think that's come from, again, kind of taking the reins and, and leaving the binder behind that the previous guy left is let's brainstorm and create our own path. And so there's certain people like there's a guy, Tim, that I always call upon when we're trying to brainstorm for our big week long competition. And um, and he lives in Kansas now. And he's but he looks forward to it so much that he can contribute in that way. And there's a number of people like that for different things that we do that I can reach out to. Um, and uh, yeah, we we heard a, a quote once at a camp conference that the, the closer you are to weird the closer you are to success or something like that. I'm totally butchering it. But, it's a Seth Godin uh, quote from one of my presentations. Yeah. Is that right? There yes. Well? Yeah. It, how does it go exactly? Well, the the weirder you are, the more you are be truly remarkable. At the moment that you say to yourself, we couldn't get any weirder, then you're beginning to become truly remarkable. And we, so uh, we heard that <clears throat> at a conference. I guess, yeah, I didn't re- even remember this from you, Travis, but that's great that, um, and we've really latched on to that. And so, and all the brainstorming that I do when I reach out to people or the brainstorming that we do here at camp, um, we talk about all that, that all the time, like, yeah, that sounds pretty weird. Let's do it. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I would just recommend that it, it keeps things fresh at camp and it makes it fun for you. Yeah. Right on. Thank you. I think yeah. camp is, camp is kind of what I like, is, but the word weird, I love the camp is is that place that allows people to still be weird and, and without that you can do things at camp and someone will call you weird that the same people wouldn't have the the courage to do it in the city and stuff and wear that outfit like wake up in the morning and just put on that why you're so weird yeah but you wouldn't have that same courage and it's cool that there's still a place that accepts weird 
right? And 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 that's what summer camp to me. That's that's why I love Sam. You know, I love when someone a camper or staff goes. You're so weird. I like thank you. It's a compliment, thank. right? Yeah. Yeah, and you know, I'd yeah. rather be weird than boring, right? <laughs> like, you know. Yeah. Um, Travis, for, for you, I, I'm assuming you were going to ask me the same yes. question. Yeah. So, um, you know, likewise, I, I think mentors, I think I, 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 you know, never be afraid to ask someone, Hey, you know, I think camp people are always willing to help others. Like we've all been, we've all been there. So it's kind of cool to give back, but I also love to, to continually learn. You know, I think that's a, a huge thing that people get into a role and you become a senior person and, you know, a camp director. And you're like, I don't need to go to a conference anymore. I know everything that there is. And I don't need to read a book and I don't need to listen to podcasts. Like, you know, the journey of learning and, and, and constantly growing and growing and growing, you know, that you got to keep up with. Make it a point to listen to a different podcast. Buy a, a magazine that you wouldn't really you know, typically do, I call someone and say, what are your top five books on leadership, on mentoring, on, on something different also to, to, you know, read someone's biographies, um, whether they're in camping or not, because there's always these huge takeaways. So I am, you know, a, a student of learn, like obsessive, constantly reading different leadership books and going to conferences. And, you know, even prior to this conversation, we were just talking about which podcasts yeah. we liked. And I'm like, awesome, you know, more things to, rather than listening to like, the radio and stuff, constantly learning, I think, and, and, um, and open to change. You know, I think that's what you said is, is being always, oh, you know, one of the things that we have, one of the traditions that we have at camp is that we love change. Um, and that's, a, that's a tradition, you know, and people are like, well, that's kind of you neat. Know, usually tradition is like you're set in stone. I said, no, but our tradition is change. Like right. it's a constant because there's going to be as a camp director, you're in that position that you can constantly change and con just because someone did it that way doesn't mean like like you said like you know um joe's binder that he gave you of how to be a, a camp director that's how he did it doesn't mean that's how i want to do it yeah yep yeah right on well thank you both that that was awesome and so we are going to then turn on to and go to the tool of the week before they do that, I want to tell you that the Tool of the Week is brought to you by the Camp Hacker Marketing Wall Calendar. Some of you can watching the video can see it behind me on the wall here. Um, we are doing some unusual pricing with that because it's a calendar that starts in September and goes to September. Every month we're taking off um, one twelfth of the price. So the price is dropping. Um, and uh, so you're likely to be listening to this in, in December or January. And so if you go to camphacker.tv, you'll see um, the Camp Hacker Marketing Wall Calendar and you can get it it's still useful. I think that you'll find lots of use for it for the season and into the fall. Um, but I would encourage you to go check that out on camphacker.tv. So Travis, uh, sorry, yes. I, I noticed on the calendar, yeah, yeah, yesterday on Thursday, it's it's TBT. TBT. Yes, yeah. I just noticed I've had it up in my office, and I was like, oh, cool. I just I picked up on that. It's a great tool. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Right on. Yeah, TBT Throwback Thursday. Just to remind yeah. people to put out some old pictures or something fun for your alumni on on Thursday. So yeah, thank you for that, Mark. Um. Yeah, so for people joining us for the first time, um, and I'm sure we'll have lots of new listeners with Mark and Topher, their, their crowd of followers joining and listening to the podcast for the first time. The tool of the week is just something that each of us brings that helps us become a better camp director. And uh, so, Mark, I wonder if you'd start off with yours, please. Sure. Um, mine is actually is it was a, one of the, my favorite podcasts, which is the TED Radio Hour um, by N, as in... Um, new PR, NPR Radio R. It's ho hosted by a guy, a guy Roz. Um, and it, they're about 50 minutes long, you know, 45, 50 minutes long. Um, but they're amazing. This guy, I, I love the way that he, he takes out a bunch of different podcasts and they kind of piece it together. Um, it, he's really entertaining, great, really cool different topics. Um, I love the TED Talks, and this is kind of like a – they explode all the TED Talks and bring all these little snippets together. So it's the – it's one of my favorite po podcasts, the TED Radio Hour by NPR. Right on. Thanks, Mark. I can echo that that is a great one. I also enjoy it. Uh, for you, Topher? Yeah, so uh, here at Camp Grey, we 
uh, love creating videos and being creative and being weird uh, as well. And uh, so we get a lot of our inspiration from Vimeo. They have staff videos of the day. Every day they've got close to a dozen new videos that they recommend people check out. Um, so I'd like to say that we get all of our ideas from our own brains what, for our videos, but that's not true. We, we look at a lot of videos and a lot of stuff out there and kind of take. So uh, I recommend if you're looking for creative new video ideas, check out Vimeo staff picks of the day. Staff picks, right on. Cool, thank you so much. Um, my pick is um, a book by a guy who wrote The Back of the Napkin. It's just about um, using, exploring drawing as just as a way of increasing your creative thinking. And, and he's really big on encouraging people who say they can't draw to take a risk um, and draw this. And it gives people tools for that. Well, his latest book is called Blah, Blah, Blah. Um, and it is awesome. It is uh, what to do when words don't work. Part of the challenge of marketing summer camp is that if you haven't been there, it's hard to get. Um, it's hard to understand what summer camp is. And I think that some of the tools in here would be great for people um, to either put it up in video form, like a whiteboard Wednesday where you're drawing on a whiteboard and just explaining a piece of your program, or in general, using drawing as a tool to get people who haven't been to camp to understand what it is we do. Because the thing that we go up against with families that don't have camp in, in their background, don't have at least one parent or grandparent who's been to camp, is that to them, every camp is white hot American summer. And okay. every camp is meatballs. And so we need to get past that by telling better stories. And yeah. this, I think, is a great tool for, for collecting and telling better stories and explaining what we do because it's so visually, it, it's visual, it um, is more engaging for people. It disrupts that, you know, people shutting down their brains when they hear summer camp because of, you know, all of the bad, the bad things, the, the impressions that people have about camp. So, um, Travis, I, I saw him speak. Um, there's a great, uh, when I said constantly learning, there's yeah. a great series of speakers, that, the art of um, series. So they, they, they do all over all over the world. I think the art of there's the art of leadership, the art of management, the art of um, marketing. So he, him, and uh, Daniel Pink yeah. um, spoke, and he, he, in person, his presentation still to this day was, I think, um, one of the best presentations I've ever seen because it was literally he just was drawing the entire time, and it was going from these guys who went from these very stiff PowerPoint presentations to this guy who just. Little, little stick people the yeah. entire time and, and being a right brain kind of creative thinker he's so cat like and i've read some of his books his yeah. in person if anyone ever gets a chance to see this guy is absolutely mind-boggling brilliant yeah. uh, just, i haven't read that book though yep yeah. his name's dan rome so yeah. look for some videos and check out his books yeah it's great right on sure. well thank you to both of you for being here mark do you can you tell people if they have any follow-up questions for you or want to get in contact he prays upon you where they should uh find you to do so <laughs> yes well not on skype because apparently i have three different skype <laughs> <laughs> um, accounts um but uh the easy one is mark m-a-r-c at camp tamarack and uh it's Camp Tamarack is T A M A R A C K dot info. There's a, a bunch of Camp Tamaracks, but we're the Camp Tamarack dot info. Or if you just Google Camp Tamarack Canada or Ontario, you can find us info at Camp Tamarack dot info. Happy to help out with any anything that people need for sure. Right on. And Mark's too humble to say so, but I think you should also check out Mark Cooper Art because Mark is also a, a an amazing artist. So does some really cool stuff. So Mark, thanks, thanks for man. joining us today. I really appreciate yeah, my it. My pleasure. Thank you. Right on. And Topher, how about you? How can uh, people heap praise upon you? Uh, yeah, uh, people just send an email to bigfun at campgray.com and gray is G-R-A-Y. Um, likewise, I'm happy to talk about camp especially in the winter here in wisconsin i love talking summer camp so yeah. send your questions my way right on well thank you to both of you for joining us today we're sorry that uh, gab dan and joe weren't able to make it but it's been a great show and I'm, I'm really pleased with the way the conversation went so if you the listener have got some good stuff out of the show you appreciated um, some stuff or wrote down some quotes um i wrote down a couple quotes for 
tweeting out this show. Um, any of those things that you got some value, um, we would love it if you would share the show around. And an easy way to do that is um, on top of the the, uh, the iTunes review, you can just tweet out something. If you go to camphacker.tv slash love, you can let people know that you appreciated the show and that you got something out of it. And uh, you know, just share that um, what you got out of it and what the benefits were to you you can also get in touch with me travis at camphacker.tv if you have any questions or follow-up or suggestions and finally the last thing i would say is that the show notes from this so the links to the tools of the week etc can be found at camphacker.tv slash podcast so thank you very much for to the two of you for joining me and to everybody who's been watching on YouTube and listening in your cars or while you're walking the jo- your dog on the trails at camp. Uh, thanks for the evening, friends. Mm-hmm.